Hey VC, it's me. It's me, Dave Splash. I'm here with another video. This is uh, the first one of a series of, of videos I'm going to do on this particular topic. Now, those of you uh, who know me in real life, which is probably very few of you that are watching the video, uh, know that uh, I used to work in the music business uh, in the 1990s. Um, I call it my past life, okay? Because we're going to go back about 20 years into my history and, um, and we're going to dig through uh, some of my vaults a little bit. Now, I was uh, I'm never an artist. You know, I took guitar lessons as a kid. I sucked. You know, I, I, I never really developed any artistic talent. However, I do think that I, I developed a pretty good ear for talent and could hear bands in their early stages and figure out that these guys are really good and worth pursuing. So I ended up starting my own record label in 1994 called Mafia Money Records. Here's our logo. Okay. So let's, uh, let me tell you how that started. So we're talking about 1993 and I was living in Seattle at the time. I had was going to school at the Seattle Art Institute and I was interning for a music publicist uh, that lived in Seattle. And um, she was pretty well known at the time and did all the, the cool like punk and indie bands from Seattle and uh, even some other bigger name clients like we had Motorhead as a client for one time. Anyways, College Music Journal, CMJ, puts on a convention every year in New York City and all of college radio and all of the music industry um, that isn't already in New York goes to New York and um, every band is, you know, plays at a club everywhere and whatever and it's just fucking hipster central. So I went in 1993, and uh, Archers of Loaf, I remember, was the big buzz band at the time. Everyone was talking about them. And um, when I had some free time, I went walking around uh, in the village looking for, like, famous New York record stores that I'd never been to. And I believe I went into Bleecker Bob's. I, I could be wrong on, the, on which store it was that I found the single, but I walked into um, this awesome record store in New York in the village, and I was digging through the seven inches, and I found a seven inch by this band who um, I'd never heard of, and they were called Hugh, like the, the name of a, a person, Hugh, H-U-G-H. And they had a little sticker that the uh, record store had written, and it said, um, cross between Pavement and Dinosaur Jr. I thought, wow. In 1993, those were like my two favorite bands, so uh, I bought the single without even hearing it, took it home, played it, was on green vinyl. It was fantastic. I loved both sides. And at that time, you know, there's no email and there's no whatever. So their letter, their address was inside the single. And I wrote them a letter, told them uh, that I lived in Seattle and that I was going to be starting a record label uh, pretty soon. I was going to be moving to Madison, Wisconsin. That's when I was going to start the label. And would you be interested in working with me? And I left my phone number. And, uh, you know, a week or so later, they call me up. They say, yeah, sure, you know, we're interested. And I told them I'd get them on a show in Seattle. And I did. And the band came up to Seattle, and I met them, and I put them on a pretty good show through some help of some friends that I had at the time. And um, we met, and that began the, the, the record label. Uh, in 1994, I left Seattle. I moved to Madison, Wisconsin, and we started the label. And... What I'm going to do for this, uh, these video, these segments, these videos that I'm doing, is I created little videos for the songs on the seven inches. So um, we're going to go through each one, and that's why I'm breaking it up into a bunch of videos. This video here is my releases one, two, and three, which were all seven inch singles. Okay, so let's start with the first one. This is the band Hugh right here. The song is called Crush. That was the A side. There's the back of it, Henry's Daughter. Let me take out the uh, record here. There is the A side. This is the double A side. And let me tell you a little secret about that. When this song was originally being released, I mean, I loved this band uh, a lot. Um, but they wanted the song Crush to be the single, and uh, then they were giving me an unreleased track on the back, this is called Henry's Daughter. 
And um, I liked pretty much every song the band sent me except for that one. But they wanted to put it on there. And, um, you know, I was new. I, I didn't know anything. I didn't really feel like I was in a position to say, you know what, no, I'm gonna, I want to go with a different song. So I went with them, and we made the best of it. But I always liked the other side better, Henry's Daughter. So rather than having an A and a B, I made uh, Henry's Daughter double A, and then I did that from every other every other record that uh, that we ever did. So uh, the first one is uh, the band Hugh. They're from San Francisco. And um, I'll, let's do the little video here for, uh, uh, for both sides of the single. So Crush, Henry's Daughter. This is MMR, as in Mafia Money Records, 001.
there you have it, Hugh. MMR001. Let's move on to the second record, okay? This next band is called Ritual Device. Vastly different from Hugh. These guys are from Omaha. Now, I live in Omaha now, and I grew up in Omaha, but at the time, in 1994, I was not in Omaha. I was familiar with the band Ritual Device because they were a great uh, uh, local band when I was in um, high school and, and early college, and I knew about them, and um, they were kind of a, a Jesus Lizard esque band. They were very heavy, driving bass, uh, manic lead vocalist. The lead singer is a guy named Tim Moss, who is known uh, uh, very much in uh, the Omaha music community. Now he's uh, actually the manager for Faith No More uh, at this point in time. And this was his band, and uh, I contacted them. I didn't know Tim, even though I was from Omaha uh, originally. And I called him up and I said I'd like to. Uh, do a record with you guys. Uh, there was no money to go into the studio, so they said, well, you know, we recorded some live tracks. We can give you some live stuff. And um, and they said it would be exclusive to the record, and um, one of the songs, or two, one or two of them, were on their previous album in a studio form, and then another song was brand new. So uh, I was like, yeah, cool, you know? And uh, I asked them if they had any ideas about the artwork, and they said no. And uh, I said, I know a guy. That can, that can possibly do it. And I got a guy named Joe Newton to draw the artwork. Now Joe Newton is a, uh, a comic artist, but at the time he was best known as the drummer of the punk band Gas Huffer. Maybe, maybe he still is actually, I honestly don't know the status of Gas Huffer. I thought they broke up in the 90s, but um, they were real big up in the Northwest and he's a good artist and he did both pictures of that. And um, the band also included their own insert inside the record. So here's the insert that they put in. Okay, a little bit of information about who's in the band, the recording, and then this. Okay, that was their insert. I had a little insert just basically uh, saying what other releases were available and um, what was going to be coming soon, stuff like that. So, ultimately, this was the only time I ended up working with Ritual Device. The single did pretty well. I sold through the initial thousand copies, and um, uh, but I made 1,500 covers because they were full color and they were very expensive to make. And so, um, when I ran out of singles, I made about 500 more and barely sold any of those. So, I still had a shit ton of them uh, afterwards. And my relationship with them kind of soured afterwards not really going to bother getting into it. It was a long time ago. Um, but anyways, this is still a great record either way. So this is, um, I'm only going to play you one song. This is one of the A-side singles. This is uh, Charlie Jones uh, from the band Ritual Device. This was MMR002. Charlie Sides, he's gonna run for Man. Man, there ain't no way. He's gonna win. If Charlie goes down on Valley, I'll get down on Ryan Valley. People flock around, around the world to vote. But I'll tell you one thing. Ah! the mayor of our illustrious city. And as they say, good things come to those who wait. The things that are illegal are now legal, and vice versa. Man, you can come to my town. Oh. Okay! 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 
All right, again, that was my Ritual Device single live, MMR002, three songs, um, recorded live. It plays at 33 RPM, by the way. Just uh, letting you know. That's an FYI on that one. Okay, the next band I worked with is another band that uh, I did a lot of projects with, actually. Uh, these guys uh, were called the X Action Figures, and here was the single that we did. Okay, that artwork is super cool. That's a collage that uh, Chris, the bass player, made. That's obviously Elvis Costello uh, on the front there with a light bulb over his head. The B-side is called Light Bulb. Okay, so Chris uh, was the one responsible for this artwork. Super cool. The band was from Madison, Wisconsin. It was a trio at the time. And um, the main guy in the band was a guy named Paul Grimstad. He was the songwriter and the singer. Uh, Chris, the aforementioned Chris Ross, played bass. I had um, uh, uh, Brian Voss play drums. And I fell in love with this band immediately. I thought they were the replacements meets XTC. Um, they were just churning out song after song after song after song that was so good. And we captured two of them on this single. Uh, the uh, first one, G uh, Great Divide, is a real short, um, noisy, fuzzed out indie pop thing bands like Guided by Voices, and then the B-side is a longer, more uh, sprawling, like six or seven minute song that has a lot of elements of like David Bowie and uh, uh, done in a lo-fi format though, so this was great. This is MMR003, this is from the X Action Figures, Great Divide, backed with light bulb.
Okay, so those are the first three releases. I think that's a good place to cap the video. It's probably uh, much longer than my general videos and much longer than most people are interested in watching on YouTube, but um, I thought this stuff was important. So, Okay, in the next video, uh, we'll do uh, the next couple of releases, which are uh, MMR 4, 5, and 6. Number 4 is a full-length CD from the band Hue called You Are Here. Number 5 is another 7-inch single, which is from a band uh, from Chicago called Larry Cash Jr. It's a great, great single. They didn't release very much stuff. Uh, they morphed into the band The Pulsars and um, ultimately went on and signed a major label contract after that. And then uh, number six is another record from Hugh. It's an EP called Lucky Drive. So we'll get to those uh, in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, thanks a lot, VC. I will be talking to you guys soon.